Hi, this is Kagi, and welcome to episode 295 of the High Fiber Diet. Maybe. It'll be over here somewhere, I think. It might be over here. I don't know. It's wherever I decide to put it. Grab a cup of tea, grab a cup of whatever, or a glass of whatever, and yeah, it's been a long week, hasn't it? Mm. I got a couple things finished. My tiger socks got finished. And um, I did go ahead and do the short row heel. It's not my favorite heel. It's not my favorite fit. Definitely tell the difference in gauge from when I used to knit socks. I probably could have gone up a full needle size. Um, the second sock is much tighter around the foot. And let's see, which one's the second sock? This one's the second sock. I did a better heel turn on it for the um, short row heel, but it is tighter around the foot and much looser in the leg and you can tell the difference when you slide them on the feet um, so i'm going to have to find someone with smaller feet than me to be wearing these so yeah this was out of i want to say it was opal but it might have been old 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 regia it could have been um some other brand i'm not sure but it was deep stash, it was halfway done, and I figured I'd finish it. So those are on Hornshaw sock blockers, as are the ones from last week. And I'll just hang these up here, see if I can get them both on the same hook. Not real coordinated here. The second thing I finished, I did those on size two needles like normal. Um, like I said, I probably, because of how loose I was back then, I probably could have gone up to a size three to match gauge, but I didn't. I just finished them up and these are done on a size two and they're fine. The other thing I finished is my adaptation of the Mount Blanc sweater. I did this one in crochet with knitted um, ribbing. I, I don't care for crocheted ribbing. Now, I am a crocheter who knits. I'm a hooker who plays with needles. Um, but I like knitted ribbing. And since I can do both, I mix the grape and the grain. So this one, I did a ribbing down at the bottom. I did a larger ribbing around the face. And I did ribbing on the sleeves. Other than that, I went by the schematics and just cast on. Um, I did a crocheted seam at the top instead of a three needle bind off. It's very smooth, very even. It's on the inside. This was done out of Red Heart Super Saver in the Aaron Fleck, I believe it was. And I want to say it took me five skeins, not quite five skeins. So it wasn't the, the, the really big super saver kind, but it was five regular skeins um, held double. Did it on uh, end hook and a size 15 for the ribbing. And I really like the way it was made up. Um, the green one's going to my niece. This one will be going to my sister. And they are the type that, though they are knitworthy, they prefer washable and request the acrylic. And this is actually, since it's been washed and dried, it got killed. So it's very, very soft. So I will be getting those out into the mail with a couple other things um, nearer to Christmas time. So those are my two finished objects. Um, I did not work on my Felix sweater. I just, I tried it on and it doesn't fit right. 
And I'm probably going to finish it and give it away. But it's kind of a disappointment. And I know I only have the sleeve. And it would probably fit right if I was not up to 20 pounds from Corona that I am. And so I may hang on to it and say, you know what, I'll shrink into it. And I am back on my bariatric diet full time. I am not fudging anymore, writing everything down, doing things like that. So I think by the end of the year, still within plenty of time for um, me to wear a sweater, that I will be able to wear it. But do I want to? I don't know. Right now, it's kind of tucked aside. I know it needs a, a five inch sleeve, which it has two inches on it. So three inches of sleeve and what, four inches of ribbing? Because I did a three quarter length sleeve. I might get to it, but I have lots more to show. So when I finish those socks, I cast on socks. And this, again, I have no idea. It is a mystery yarn that I got at Knitting in the Mitten one year on the Lost the Love table, which everybody brought stuff to that. And then it didn't matter if you brought or not, you got to take because nobody wanted to go home with what they brought. So this is um, a lot brighter than what it's showing up. Maybe it'll come out different. But um, it kind of feels like the old Lion brand um, wool sock get what that was called. But it also could be a Regia. Um, I don't know. Here it is without, this is the other half of it. So it's wound up. I am doing it on size two um, sock sticks. And I like my size two sock sticks. They're pointy enough that they get the job done. Um, I'm a DPN person. I've tried others. In fact, I have flexi flips. I have nine inch cirques. I'm not sure, but those two will be going up on my to be gone. I'll probably put them up on Instagram. And if somebody wants to grab them, um, pay for shipping, don't care. And if I haven't put them up yet, text me. But I did a simple, it's more of a shorty sock, maybe a four inch doing these for, well, I was doing them for my nail tech, but my daughter-in-law put a shout out this morning and said, mom, I really like those. They look comfy. So these may go to my daughter-in-law. And then I have this ball of mystery yarn that I could do for the nail tech. And I don't know. It's just how it goes. I've got other bright ones sitting over here. You can see a bunch. Um, got a really bright one there that I did for my, I think I did these on my Mojo socks. And I could do that with heels and toes for like a Rose City Rollers or something for the nail tech. She's really into bright colors, so. I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. But as it is, I have these going. And what else have I picked up? In cleaning the craft room, I found some things. One of the things I found was this bucket bag. This was Erin Mine Bags, I believe. It's got fuzzies all over it. It's been in the craft room forever. Knitters will keep you in stitches. Um, I don't remember when I got this ages ago, probably 2010 at Stitches Midwest. But what I found was this easy shawl that has a story behind it. Back in 2009, we had fiber in the forest. And Annetta T had attended from Kentucky. And she wore this shawl. 
it was a simple rectangle with this seed button that was absolutely gorgeous and I haven't found a button like it but one of these days I will because I want that seed button it was awesome but while she was there I said I'd like to lay it out and I'd like to start making one and we counted it up and so it was 75 stitches across and then five five inches down you made a buttonhole and then you knit to the end of three skeins of yarn. Well, I made one of them and the skeins of yarn completely discontinued, but it is a lot like, do you remember that zebra that I had? Um, well, I still have it. It's tucked away over there and I can't get to it right now, but um, it is a single, fluffy single spun. I mean, even Malabrigo uh, worsted would probably work for this, but it is, 100 grams, 196 yards, made in Italy. This was 79% wool and 21% linen. It's by Cascade Yarn and it's called Rustic. And I did one in gray in that color. And this one is in a navy with white flecks. And I started this, how I got this yarn was I had made the first one and I only had two skeins. And I'm like, I love it, but I want it longer. So I put it, you know, just a, at that time, I believe it was a tweet. Might have been a plurk. Um, it was long before Instagram. And Texas Pearl Girl got a hold of me and said, I have that yarn. I'm not using it. Let me send it to you. I started it so many years ago, and this looks like a really big buttonhole, but I have a really big button to go with it. I think it's a three inch button, might be three and a half inch, but it does go through just fine. Put it through. Probably actually have to cinch it up just a little bit, but what I do on my buttons like this, if they're this big so they don't gape, is I do either a buttonhole stitch around it or I do a tailor's stitch around it to um, make it to where there's not gappies. Now this, I want to say I started this in, two thousand ten or two thousand eleven. It is on size eleven square needles. Um. My computer's saying funny things. Cast on 75 stitches, about five inches in, I did a buttonhole. And now it is just stockinette knit with slip stitch edges. So on the pearl side, you make a um, knit at the end so that you can slip stitch and come up with the very nicely chained. It's gonna roll, but at least it looks nice in the end. Um, it does roll top and bottom. I'm not worried about it because it gets worn kind of like a poncho, but you can still wear it like a shawl if you want to. It is just a long rectangle and there's no pattern for it. That's why I'm giving it out here. It was just a simple net it up. And so this is only the first skein and I still have reaching, still have about half the skein. And then I have two more skeins to go. And I've been slowly knitting on that at night, getting back into it because it changes my um, needle gauge. Another sip of tea. Mm. Put the button back in there so I don't lose the button. There is a little pocket in that yarn line bag that keeps that. So there we go. Well, hello. Are you going to come up here and say hi? Hey, over here. You going to say hi? Yeah. Is you my problem child? You knocked over my first cup of tea? Yeah. Okay, no, you're not climbing up there. Let's go down. Slowly getting this, this room 
to where I can actually do things in it. And the cats like to climb up on top of everything. So yeah, when I am finally finished, I'll, um, might do a, a room reveal, but that'll be a while because I am sorting through absolutely everything, getting rid of what I don't need. The next thing I saw Sunday morning? Is it Sunday? Or is it Monday? Monday. Was it Tuesday? No. Hmm, might have been Tuesday. One of these days earlier this week. I know it's Thursday now. I was watching a podcast. I've been doing a lot of research on podcasters that have walked away from Ravelry and I want to give them support. Well, one of them led me to another, led me to another, and I don't know if this one has or hasn't, but I went and looked at it and I don't even remember the name of it, but, and that's horrible, it's in my YouTube feed. My YouTube feed is accessible. That's he, neither here nor there, though. She was working on a shawl that I just went, I have to make that. I have all the yarn I need. I have to make that. And normally, I am not a Stephen West fan. He's a little bit too eclectic for me. And this one, yeah, I'm doing it. So it is called the West Forge Wanderer. I believe that's how you pronounce it. And that's by Stephen West. And I am doing it in these colors. Well, that ain't gonna help you. I use um, is that notepad, note shelf for um, keeping track of my patterns. And I labeled them A through G. You need seven skeins. And see, when I say that I use it, I'm able to highlight, I'm able to mark off where I am. Um, he did one in a multicolor. That one didn't really catch my eye as much. I know a lot of people are into that. That's not something I would wear. Um, I do, however, really like this. So I went and purchased it. And the colors I've shown you, but what are the yarns? So I have, this is the beginning of it. Let's show that first. So I'm on the third wedge. I am really liking, everything's held double and it's marled, so it changes. Really liking the way it came out. I have one screw up right here, and that happened during the debates last night. I'm not taking it out because it happened during the debates last night, and this is for me. The colors in it just, I love fall colors. So this is going to be for me. Um, the whole bottom band is done first, and I'm able to do it on a size 8 16 inch needle, just back and forth. Um, I'm enjoying this. This is Snowy Owl. Let me grab my little cards because I know it's CJ Kopeck Creations and she's not dying anymore. But all the names of the difference. Yep. So all of these are Merino singles. I was listening to a podcaster the other day and she said they're called single yarns. No, actually, they're called singles. 
There's an S on the end of it. It sounds funny, but that's what they're called. Um, this is Kobe's Solitude Fingering Weight. 100% Superwash Yards, um, Merino Wool, 460 yards. So this is Snowy Owl. You can see the different flecks in there. This is Mouse. It's a tonal gray that's just gorgeous. That one's attached, so I don't know what is that. This is Terracotta. This is Honey. Mm, this is the one I forget. I think it's Colonel. Yeah. And it's a warm, woodsy brown. And then I needed two more skeins, and I had been given some cloudborn in a swap a while ago, and they were both singles. And I have Autumn Heather which is another deep orange, but it's more um, pumpkin spice than the other one is more terracotta. And then the last one is Stone Heather. And Cloudborn was from Craftsy, and I'm not sure if they're coming back out with it or not. Um, but that's that one. And it's a brown gray. And so all of these colors play really well together, as you saw. Um, I've only had two nights of, so it must have been Tuesday, because today's Thursday. Um, but I had two nights of working on this a couple hours each. And it's coming together really well. I am enjoying it immensely and I, I can't wait to wear it. It's not just a process net, it's a project net on this one. So hopefully I don't grow bored. Um, this is marking my right side. I also have um, sewn in as I come to the end of the wedge, I sew them in and so I'm going to be sewing in these. Um, ends and that way I'm not having to deal with ends at the end because there are 65 sections of two colors that need to be done and so that's four ends per section but you're taking like you'll knit with one Oh, you'll knit with two and then you'll drop one and pick up the next. And so I have done it. You're supposed to do them all the same. And I didn't like that because it wasn't showing the effect of the yarn to me. It was always going to be blah, 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 blah. So what I did was I wrote down that I would do it the way the pattern says in the first row or in the first full wedge. And then I would do it a little bit differently in the second full wedge. And the wedges are only five, so it's doubled five, and you have seven different colors. And so the first wedge was one, so A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E, F, you know and on. 
So that would only be one, and then I had this one and this one to come back to before it started again with another wedge. And so by doing them a little bit differently, the colors kind of play on each other, but they're not. Now this one is now restarted over here. So I'm restarting at this point and I'm in the middle of wedge three to restart. So that's not bad. Or am I at the end of wedge three? One, two, three, four. No, I'm only four because there's one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And so I have one more over here before I go on. And I'm really enjoying it. It's all garter at this point. Um, I believe it goes into lace and feather and fan and other things like that as I get more into the project. And yeah, I'm excited. Um, I think that's all I have worked on, but I have a lot more to talk about. Let's see, and I'm dropping things because that's how the little table goes. Let's see. I haven't really said anything about the passing of two of our knitting rock stars. Kat Bordai passed away a couple of weeks ago. I think I said something, but I'm not sure, but just to be sure, um, she will be missed. Um, and Annie Modisat just passed away, I believe, last week. Um, both of these ladies were forerunners in the way of thinking and the way of doing things. Um, Mode Nets was, she thought outside the box just as much as Cat Board I did, but in a different way. Um, she was the first one to say, you know what? There's no knitting police. You don't have to knit like Elizabeth Zimmerman. You don't have to knit like the Grand Duchess. You can knit the way you knit. She did a lot of combination knitting. She said, that's the way it's easiest for me, so that's the way I do it. Um, knocked a few people off pedestals with that one, and she was a hoot of a person. Um, her family was wonderful. Uh, her children, um, unfortunately, have lost both mom and dad to cancer, and um, Kat Bordeye's family, wonderful. Um, yeah, my heart goes out to both of their families, and, you know, I lost my mom 21 years ago this year, and it never, you still turn around every once in a while and go, God, I wish I could call her. I lost my dad, you know, what was it, 2007? So it's been a while on that one, too, and there are times I wish I could pick up the phone and I know those their children will feel the same way and you know they're up there holding that knitting circle in the sky right um, Serge and I had to change carriers on our cell phones having to do that I had to wait until he was home and I knew he'd be home for a day or two to be able to get everything worked out. I had to have all of his devices, all of my devices in the same place, and we had to go in. Well, we had Sprint, and we had Sprint for years. And Sprint got bought out by T-Mobile, and some people got better service and some people didn't, and we didn't. Our service went to the point where we would have to turn off our cell service and jump on a Wi-Fi in order to get stuff done. And that's just not what we needed. Especially with him being anywhere and everywhere with what his job is at this point in time. He needs something that if he's on the road or whatever, he can get service. And uh, I walked into Sprint and I had already called him and said, can I do this in the store? Can I get everything I need in the store? And then the lady on the customer service, very nice, said, yeah, you can go ahead and get all of your account numbers, all of your system numbers, all of your, they'll show you how to get your special numbers. We can, we can cancel it at that point and then um, you'll have all the information you need. And I had told her why we were leaving and they had tried their best to keep us. And I'm like, it's just in the area we're in and where he goes, we have to be guaranteed service. So I talked to a lot of friends and um, yeah, I walked into Sprint and I said, you know, I had talked to your customer service online 
and can I get this information? We don't do that in a store. What do you mean you don't do that in a store? Well, we don't do that in a store. Yeah, but if you'd like to upgrade, we can. And I'm like, no, you don't get it. I've paid off my phones. I've paid off my tablets. I've paid off everything. Everything is mine. Everything is outright. I just want them unlocked, and I need the, the codes to cancel. And, of course, they're doing their job, and I understand that. But they made me very angry. And not two doors down from Sprint is AT&T. So Sarge is like, you need to calm down. You need to. And I'm like, nope, I'm walking in here. Walked in. The guy's there alone. And he said, what do you need? And I said, I need these unlocked. And I need to move to AT&T. Because uh, at this point in time in the service that we need, from what I understand from all my friends, it will work for us. All the people that Sarge works with, the people he travels with, they had AT&T and didn't have a problem. So that's what we're going with. It took us four hours between phone calls to get all four devices, two iPads and two iPhones, moved over. Had to take Sarge out for dinner because he wasn't a happy camper. And um, yeah, it just, why do companies think that we're not consumers and that they can treat us that way and we won't walk away? And it's the same way I feel about what happened with Ravelry. We are a consumer and yeah, you're a tool, but I can use you as a free tool. I don't have to pay for things on your site. And with Sprint, I could just walk away. And so we did. Um, numbers haven't changed. Nothing on our phones have changed. Everything is still good. Three days later, I got a call from, from Sprint. Since you have taken your phones off, your tablets are now going to be charged X amount. I called them back up and I'm like, oh no, 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 because I canceled that on the same day. Well, we didn't have, and I said, go back and look in your transcripts because I know you guys record everything that we say on these, and this is the time, this is the date, and so I walked away. I think we were two days over from when we should have, and our bill was completely paid, and they're like, ah, you owe me X amount, and so it's finally done, but it was like, really, you can't even get it together enough to do that? I just... I was not a happy camper. So I know a lot of people are very happy with their service from Sprint, and I'm not saying boycott because I don't believe in boycotting. I believe in spending my money where I want to spend my money. And yeah, so we got that fiasco all taken care of. Um, I am going back to school. Well, sort of. Um, I have joined SHRM, um, Society for Creative, for uh, HR Managers. And um, it's something that you need to, they ask to have certification. Um, when you get a job as an HR manager, are you professionally credentialed? And though I hold the degree, um, I want to take the test and get my is it a PHR, something like that, um, professional HR. And it just says that I belong to this organization, I have the backing of this organization, and I pass the test. It's kind of like, I don't know, getting a real estate license or something. I don't know, so don't quote me. But um, I've decided since it's hard for me to find a job right now, uh, I have the time and the finances to do this, so I have applied. They still have to accept me. Um, I do have a, I believe it's called a sponsor or a proctor, I'm not sure which, um, someone that will, you know, give their word that I'm actually in the field. And so it looks like I'll be going back to school and maybe in February or March, I'll be taking the tests and hopefully I'll be working by then. But this is another mark on my resume that will be good. Um, yeah, did I have any acquisitions? I did. And it was that bag that I was keeping out of sight for those socks. And it is from Slipstitch Studios. 
and it has naughty fun words on it. And it is a little stock bag, um, has two pockets in it. Has the two pockets right here that you can put things in. Um, I also got in that order a ball sack. I don't think she calls it that, but I do. And that one also has fun little words on it. And that's holding my half skein. It holds a full skein. I just didn't stretch it out. Um, and then it also came with a seasonal stitch marker. The little jack-o'-lantern. Cancel culture is horrible. And I believe her name's Laura. From Stitch from Slip Stitch Studios was attacked because she used a thing online that said she had a spirit animal. Who the hell cares? Seriously? Native Americans were not the only ones with spirit animals. Nordic had them. Um, Welsh had them. You know, whatever. She used the term and she got jumped on. Well, as I said, I speak with my money. So I have supported her in the past. She has helped me with Knitting and the Mitten Prizes. And I went and I purchased from her because nobody deserves to be attacked by self-righteous social media sky screamers. No. Um, go away, do your own thing. She's a businesswoman. She said, spirit animal. I have joked around that a sloth is my spirit animal or that a hippo is my spirit animal. I don't care. Um, I really don't care. Uh, yeah, it's like saying, you know, are you saying I shouldn't have um, Mongolian beef for dinner because I'm not Asian? No, that's just stupid. It used to be that, what was it? Um, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. We're not taking over your culture. We're saying we like it enough to use a little bit of it. Um, you know what? You like spaghetti. It's not Italian. Marco Polo brought that back from, well, I don't know if he's the exact one, but I believe that's the story I've heard. Um, but brought it back from the Orient when he came back and pasta. Pasta wasn't a thing before then. They did flatbreads and hard tack and things like that. Um, at least that's what the archae or archaeologists, paleontologists, I don't know what they're called. Those doctors that search that kind of thing. Um, I'm not one of them, so I don't care. You know, <laughs> I, I give them kudos that they went to school for it. I didn't. Um, but cultural differences are cultural differences, but you know, you want to be known as African American. Some want to be known as Asian American. Some want to be known as Mexican American. I thought when you came to America and you got that citizenship card, you became an American. It wasn't little cultures in there. Um, I've never classified myself as Irish American or German American or Scott American. My dad was a Hein 57. You know, I could go back um, ages and we know that there's different ethnicities back there. My mom, on the other hand, Comanche Indian. Um, so Native American. Do you see the, the, yeah. I look like my dad. Mm. Why can't we just be American? And is it hurting anyone? Hey, there's a phone. Is it hurting anyone that she said she had a spirit animal or she put something up on her site about maybe yarn or a bag or whatever? I didn't even see the actual post. 
and the only people that call. Yep, American Red Cross. Yeah, no, I'm not go getting up to go answer that. It can go away. I'll get off my, t my I don't know, soapbox about that, but I think it's just crap. Um, my spirit animal is a sloth. I like it. I love sheepies and giraffes. I don't know if you can see that. Let me tilt that up. There we go. I have giraffes. I have a kitty cat. I have a secret squirrel. I have a mouse. I like animals. So, you know, just be nice. It doesn't cost a damn dime to be nice. They're telling me all about COVID. My husband's deployed on COVID. I don't need this phone call. Really, really don't. So, that phone call just kept going on and on and on and on, so I went and turned it off. I guess uh, Sarge is up to give blood. And I just did all my labs today. They stuck me enough. So Mr. Spot has come to visit. You don't, Mr. Spot. Does that feel good? Mommy needs to get off her soapbox, huh? Yeah. Such a good little kitty. Okay. So next on my to talk about is, am I recording? Yep, I'm recording. Um, I asked on Instagram the other night about any podcasts. Let's get you down. Here we go. Any podcast or, um, excuse me, hiccup. Indie, indie dyers or indie artists that had walked away from Ravelry. And of course, you know, I've walked away. I still have an active account. I use it as a free site. I do not give money. Not anymore. Um, how did I do that? I've had that question a couple times and I've had to explain it. Um, I opened up my Dropbox and I uploaded all of the patterns that I wanted that I had purchased and uploaded to Dropbox. So I have a Dropbox account and I've also backed them up on a Gmail. Also in Gmail, I took a photo of every project page I had and a screenshot. So I have all the information and I moved them from my iPad into a Gmail so that they were saved. Now I'm going to go into those and I'm going to edit so that it isn't the full screenshot with all the information at the top that you get on an iPad and all that. And then I'm going to take those, I think I have 340. Yeah, that's a lot. I have 340 projects. Now I didn't open every photo and make it big. I just did the project page. And I didn't take the ones that were Uggs or the ones that I had frogged. I just took my projects. And I took the photo, then I deleted. I took the photo, then I deleted. And so all of those are sitting in a Gmail, and I am going to take those into, I'm not sure where, I may go Snapfish, I may go um, here in town. Um, I'm going to get a soft, in fact, I may just go to Staples. And I'm going to get a um, spiral bound book made out of it. So, um, so I have a history, it's like my portfolio. Um, when somebody asked me about something, I used to pull up Ravelry and show that. Now I'll have this instead. I'm not keeping it in my photo sections of my phone in case I lose my phone, which I have been backing up to Amazon Photos now, and I've gotten a lot of the crap off my phone, so my phone works faster because I don't have 9,000 photos on there anymore. Yeah. Um, 
but that's what I did. Now, I don't have any projects up. I think I still have some of my stash, but I've never been one to put a ton of stash on RAV. I never use that. I use an Excel for that. And as stash comes in, I put it on the Excel. As I use it, I pull it from the Excel. I have a running total of how many yards I've used each year and how many, you know, how much I have left and all of that. And I do it in um, grams. So if I have a half a skein left, I weigh it out on my scale and I put it in as that's all I have left of that. And um, I just find an Excel and pivot tables much easier for that than I do, than I ever did with um, Ravelry. I don't like uploading photos and all that because I didn't need to. Uh, what am I using now for my project pages? Right now I'm using Instagram, but I'm going to uh, start, I don't know. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Uh, I haven't figured that out. I have, however, signed up for Ribbler, R-I-B-B-L-R, and it's a new community. And then there is also one called... can't even think of it right now. I don't know. There's another community out there. Give me just a second. But these are new communities. Are they Ravelry? No. Does Ravelry have a niche on most things? Yes. Do I have to go there? No, I have enough books and patterns that I have found in downloadings. I forgot I had patterns. Um, I'm good for a while. Really, really good. Now, of course, when I see something like this, I did go to Stephen West's site. And, um, you know, I have Ravelry as a tool, and that's what it's going to be used as. So I'm going to go to that. Thing and mm, there's love nets, there's Riddler. And what am I not seeing the other one? I know there's another site, but in this. information that I received. I found out some, and if you know more, please leave them down below in the comments so I can make a full list. Um, pen hook and needles have left. Politically incorrect knitters have left. Cantankerous knitter left. Naughty knitwits left Ravelry. River Falls Plantation Nitty McPurley, she has left Ravelry not only as a podcaster, but also as a designer and um, an indie. She does uh, bags and necklaces and such. Skeen's Diaries, I haven't watched that one. I believe it's a video. Um, Two Sisters and Some Yarn. And uh, Tuscan Knits as a... My computer's talking to me. Um, Tuscan Knits had a big thing about what happened to her when the social media people attacked. Um, a winded yarn, that's A-W-E-N-D-Y-D-D, -D. a winded, -ed? I'm not sure how to pronounce it, yarn and fiber, and the the, the deployable dyer or the I'll have to get that one for you deplorable the deplorable dyer um, if you know of any others let me know I want to support people that are out there hanging really without a net at this point in time and we're trying to make a net happen and as a business, I can understand why you would want to stay if they meet your political 
criteria. If you're not from the United States and you could care less about our political criteria, that's fine. But look at some of these other sites as well so that you're not losing out on sales. And if you're really staying for business, you need to be on all the sites. Wow, I have a tickle. Um, oh, something happy. I received in the mail my Two Sisters Yarn Company 24 Stripe Christmas Advent Kit. All the yarn in the kit was dyed on our Big Sky Base, which is 75-25. Stripe skein is split into two identical half skeins, and then you have a corresponding heels and toes. Um, each stripe is five to six rounds, and depending on your gauge, and none of the colors repeat. So this is the 2020-24 Stripe Christmas Advent Sock. And those are the socks, and that's the heels and toes, which I think of as like a sugar cookie color. So I'm looking forward to um, knitting those. That came in the mail. Um, do I have everything here that I was going to talk about? I think so. Um, Food-wise, this is the perfect time of year for squash. Uh, last night I made up um, roasted squash that I had as a side dish. All I do is I take a butternut squash and I peel it, slice it in half, get the seeds out of it, and then I chunk it in about one inch squares. Roll it in a little bit of EVOO, throw in some cinnamon because that's the flavoring I like on it, and um, put it out on parchment paper in a baking sheet. I drizzled on some local maple syrup and threw it in the oven for 35 minutes at 375. Last night I had it as a side dish with a, a burger. Um, I had um, ballpark burgers. I've been liking those in the freezer. That way I don't have to cook. So I grabbed one of those, um, pan fried it real quick. Uh, to get it heated up. They're already cooked. Threw some cheese on it and some pickles, and that's what I had for dinner last night. Tonight, I have three quarters of the squash left, and I'm going to make at least half of it up into a bisque. And so all I do to make my bisque is I'll take some onions and a little bit of garlic and um, celery, put that down in the bottom of a pan with a little bit of EVOO and get those all nice and translucent. Then I add the squash in and I mash it with a potato masher. So everything is all mashed up. I will pour in some chicken stock and some um, half and half and flavor salt and pepper if I need it. Yes, it's got the cinnamon in there, but it, it works. And then in the end, I throw it into my Ninja Blender and blend it all up so it's nice and smooth. And then I top that when I'm serving it with uh, some of the seeds that I had pulled out, I had roasted. And so I'll throw those on top and a little bit of parsley. And so that will be dinner tonight with some kind of protein on the side. And, you know, quick meals. Um, I love apples. I've been doing um, Apple Brown Betty, uh, sugar-free, gluten-free, uh, made up some apple almond cakes. Just straight apples. Uh, we do apples and nut butter. Um, yeah, it's it's that time of year that it's fun to go to the corn maze and it's fun to go to the pumpkin patch and go apple picking. And this weekend it has been promised to me that we will go apple picking. Um, we He's actually coming home this weekend, which is a surprise because he was home last weekend. But... Um, We're going to go leaf peeping because it's that time of year here. And yes, I go leaf peeping. I love the colors of, of the changes of the leaves. Just it's gorgeous. And we have a couple covered bridges here and we have a tunnel of trees. And, you know, we'll go all the way up probably to Traverse City. So 
Okay, here's Michigan. Everybody says, here's Michigan, you know, whatever. Okay, I live about right here. Take this as the Grand River, right there. So this would be the Leelanau Peninsula, and Traverse City is more about right here. And um, Petoskey, and then when you go over the bridge, is here. And this is the Thumb area, um, Saginaw, Detroit. Um, but we live here, and so we'll drive up around this way and come down and be up in there sometime probably Saturday, maybe Sunday. But it's that time of year and it's beautiful and it's not supposed to be raining, so we're going to go. And while we're up there, um, we'll hit some kind of farm or whatever. We like going to Lewis Farm, which is local, because they have the apple guns where you can shoot apples and you can shoot pumpkins, and that's fun. So, yeah, um, I guess that's it. No, no, it isn't. I have gadgets, and this week's gadgets are all smelly stuff. I had a friend have a Scentsy party, and I haven't been to Scentsy in ages, and I got um, two of these pumpkin swirl. These are Scentsy car bars. They smell amazing. I have one in my car right now, and wow, yeah, just I love it. And I got Sarge the weathered leather, so I'm going to be fixing his car seat. We have a tear in it, so I bought the stuff to fix his car seat um, leather repair kit. And um, then I'll be putting this in the car. And last weekend, I cleaned out mine and steam cleaned it and everything. And this weekend, um, hopefully, I can get that done before we go up and get that all cleaned out. And if you can, you know, Sensi Online, get in somebody's party or whatever, it's worth it. But I also, I had to go, like I said, and do all my blood draws today, and I stopped by the hospital's gift shop. And so I like to frequent there when I can, and of course, with COVID and everything, it's not as often. So when I'm actually at the hospital, I stop by. And they are now carrying green daffodil, and I've used green daffodil for a long time in essential oil roll-ons. It's one of Sarge's favorite. He gets migraines. Sometimes you, you just have a slight headache instead of a migraine, and they have headache relief. And it's Headache Helpers, and it's by Green Daffodil. And what it is, is it is a roll-on, just a little ball. And if you put it right above your temples, the headache starts to go away. And you want to shake well. And it is um, argan oil and peppermint, eucalyptus, and lavender essential oil blends. Straight lavender gives me a headache, but this, he likes it. I don't use it. I don't have headaches that often. But um, he likes that one. I do, however, use these two. Rosemary and mint, which is argan oil, peppermint, and rosemary essential oils. And this one is calming if you're feeling anxiety, which a lot of us are right now. And let's see, can you see that? I know a lot of people are saying that essential oils are nothing but hoax, but my mom used them when I was little. Uh, you would go out and get the plants, and she would make oils. So, you do you. The third one is when I wake up in the morning, and I'm not always clear-headed, and I've had my cup of coffee, and I need something just fresh and wonderful. And I just put it on my wrist. And this is straight-up lemon verbena. And to me, lemon and citrus is very energizing. It's an eye-opener. It's a awake, clean feel. And this is argan oil. Lemon verbena is the only essential oil listed. And I like argan oil. So there we go. 
So those are my gadget for this week. Even though they're not really gadgets, they're my, I picked them up and I really like them. And when I can keep them in stock, I do. Um, I also use, I have my diffuser here. I use that in here. Um, yeah. Uh, take care of yourself however you can, whether it's a cup of tea, an essential oil, a glass of wine, you know. However you feel you need to take care of you, you do you. And I guess check your checkbook before starting the high fiber diet. Take care till next time.